Oh, H&M, very, very dumb, very dumb company. Uh, they've been sued quite a bit for trademark infringement. In 2014, they were sued by Aeropostel for using Live, Love, Dream, which is so annoying. Um, uh, catchphrase, whatever. Um, but they were sued then, they've been sued plenty of times. And in 2017, they were sued by Thrasher. They sued them for using the flame font where they said uh, trip in. Um, or happiness on like gear. Um, also in that, that, that year, R13 released, you know, you can see some like more boutique brand stuff uh, with the flame font. And also that year, this uh, EDM duo Classics also sued them for making this Classics uh, shirt. But anyways, the, the, the Thrasher flame font thing. Now listen, why would a brand like Thrasher, subversive skateboard brand, Sue. That's not, like not very like cool, you know. That's not like very, I don't know, hip, right? Like not very subversive or whatever. Well, the reason why is they have to protect their trademark, the value of their mark, you know, and um, you know this is amazing. Um, this is actually you can see this. This is a um, they posted a little bit from H&M's lawyer, and I believe H&M is in Sweden or Switzerland, I can't remember. But this is great, right? This is, this is, this is great. This is what Thrasher said, they posted this image, said, just got a letter back from H&M's lawyers. Here's an excerpt from the response. Fuck off, H&M, respect the original flame. Okay, this is from H&M's lawyers. To the extent your contention that H&M used the word trippin' to indicate the source of the sweatshirt, that allegation is misplaced. H&M's use of the word trippin' is merely an ornamental or a decorative feature on the sweatshirt. Most purchasers of the sweatshirt would not automatically think the word tripping identified the source of the sweatshirt, but instead would view the word tripping as merely decorative. You get that they're fucking confused. Moreover, the words tripping and thrasher and or thrasher magazine do not sound alike nor look alike. While both words start with the letter T, that is not enough to succeed on a likelihood of confusion test. The likelihood of confusion has nothing to do with the word tripping. It has to do with the flame font, the use of the flame font. When you see the flame font, you think of Thrasher and Thrasher brand products, okay? Now, is this blurring? Is the use of uh, the flame font for tripping blurring or tarnishing? It's clearly blurring. There is no, no chance at fair use for this. This is totally exploiting a famous mark it's blurring, it's not fair use at all. Okay, and again, like I said, Thrasher has to sue to keep its brand equity up. They have to police their brand. Uh, I'll actually go through some examples from um, uh, Boyer's chapter. The first is, uh, is uh, from a, uh, uh, an example of Food Chain Barbie, published in 1999, written by Tom Forsyth. What Tom Forsyth did is he took Barbies and he placed them in awkward cooking situations where he would uh, put them on skewers and pots or put them in blenders or put them in the oven, um, dismember them, etc. And he made like a coffee table book um, called Food Chain Barbie. Okay? Uh, Mattel owns the copyright on Barbie and um, the trademark on Barbie, the name, all that stuff. And they sued, they sued um, the publisher in Forsyth. And, you know, they basically said, like, you're diluting our mark. You're using Barbie to sell our mark. You're making us look bad. Um, fans of Barbie may buy your book thinking it's made by us, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, but Forsyth had a pretty, pretty, pretty powerful book publisher behind him um, who uh, was willing to take it to court. And he claimed fair use. He, cl he claimed that his use was a fair use and that um, you know, it was parody. It came off as parody. There would be no consumer confusion. And the court agreed. The court agreed and awarded him uh, a $1.6 million in damages and $242,000 in legal fees. Just think about that. It cost him two hundred forty-two grand to take this to court, which is why so many people in copyright, trademark, patent, whatever, they settle out of court because it is so, so crazy expensive. Um, and you never know what the results are, are going to be. Now, if we look at this, 
Is this blurring or tarnishing? Maybe using the name food chain Barbie and using Barbie in there could be a little bit of blurring. Um, it's likely in terms of dilution closer to tarnishment because it does make Barbie kind of look bad. Um, but the use is totally fair, right? Is this commentary criticism building upon Barbie or simply exploiting Barbie? It's clearly commentary and criticism. Okay, be fair under that. Is the nature of the original or Barbie's creative? Yes, they are, right? He uses the whole thing, although they're chopped up. And would consumers be confused? Would the people that, you know, buy Barbie and collect Barbie think this was made by, by Mattel? The answer is highly, un, highly un, un, unlikely. It's, and it's so transformative that there would likely be no market confusion and therefore the use would be fair. And was. Imagine going on a family vacation in the early 70s. And, uh, you know, on your vacation, man, your family and their little Woody station wagon, you really love uh, you know, Coca-Cola. So you stop at a, at a rest stop on your way to the Grand Canyon and you know, buy your family some enjoy Coca-Cola t-shirts and some Coca-Cola. Um, when you're at the Grand Canyon, you're just so hyped and everybody's put on their Coca-Cola t-shirts and you take a bunch of pictures and all that stuff. When you get back to Minnesota, you develop these photographs and you realize that your shirts actually say enjoy cocaine and not enjoy Coca-Cola. <gasps> Oops. Although there used to be cocaine in Coca-Cola. Y'all probably, y'all probably knew that. Um, yeah. So Coca-Cola sued Gemini Rising for making Coca -Co enjoy cocaine, um, t-shirts in the early 70s and they, they sold them. The, the, the example of the family vacation in the Woody station wagon to the Grand Canyon did not happen. Um, but what I'm saying is you could, as a consumer, because Coca-Cola does make everything under the sun and put its logo on it, including t-shirts, bumper stickers, stuff like that, you may buy something that says enjoy cocaine on it thinking it's a coca-cola um, thing it also comments on coca-cola um, because of its history of using cocaine in its beverages um, but basically the court ruled in favor of coca-cola and let's just think about that is this blurring or tarnishing it's clearly blurring i mean it's clearly tarnishing Right? It's clearly tarnishing. It makes Coca-Cola look bad. It says, enjoy cocaine. And again, just like um, the consumer whore, it brings us back to um, market, product markets. Putting this you know, logo on t-shirts, coolers, op bottle openers, all that stuff, put it you know, basically at risk of creating consumer confusion. So although this is very transformative, it's, it transforms the purpose and is critical critical of Coca-Cola, it's commentary, um, it's the products that are the problem. So you, it could exist online or as an art piece, um, but certainly not on products that Coca-Cola owns. So it is tarnishing, fair use, hell no, likely because of the factor of M. It'd be too confusing to confuse consumers.